I think it's about time that we dive back into the Dream Team series that you may be familiar with if you've been supporting my channel for a couple of years. Specifically, I'm going to try my best to construct an Overwatch League Dream Team consisting of all European players. I've done Korea, North America, and a couple of other ones in the past, and they've all been a good bit of fun. In all of those videos, I've gotten numerous requests to give some love over to Europe, but for whatever the reason, I've just never had the motivation to fulfill this request up until now. I've been putting this video off for like two years, and I'm pretty sure every person who has ever requested it either doesn't watch my channel anymore, or they probably just think that I hate Europe or something. But better late than never, I suppose, right? Let's get to it. It's time for me to atone. Today, I'm giving my full, undivided attention to European Overwatch. But of course, there are some rules to highlight in this challenge that are very important, especially if you want to follow along and make a dream team of your own. So first off, this is strictly limited to current day players in the Overwatch League. This is not going to include any former, retired, or contenders talent. Additionally, I'm only crafting a starting lineup since I really don't want this video to be too long, and since we're heading into Overwatch 2, that means it's only going to be a starting 5. I could do a starting 6, but I kind of feel like it doesn't make sense now. It also means, though, that there's more variation with the lineups we can run since we don't have a lot of options to work with anyway since there's only a select few teams that actually have European players. The next rule in place is that I'm only going to be allowed to select one player from any team. By implementing a limitation like this, it makes for a better challenge that requires a bit more thought instead of just saying, yeah, I'll pick a bunch of players from this team and that team and then leave everybody else behind. No one likes that. That's no fun at all. And while this final thing isn't necessarily a rule, please do keep in mind that this is by no means the common consensus best possible lineup you can make. This is simply what I personally would run if it were possible to make a team like this, and if you do disagree with me, I encourage you to make a team of your own. But that's enough about the rules, let's get right into this challenge because there's a lot to do. The first thing that I want to accomplish is to establish a foundation with some good pieces that I have total confidence in. With limited options on the table in terms of what we could run, I believe that it is critical that we get a couple of positions that we know for a fact can carry. And with the emphasis we've seen be put on DPS heading into Overwatch 2, I believe that it makes sense to stack up on this position as much as possible. Starting at my flex DPS spot, I gotta go with my main man, Kevster. It's a little unfortunate that Funny Astro is now off the table, but I believe that the trade-off is worth it because Kevster is going to raise the ceiling of this roster by himself a lot. With how he played in 2021, I deem Kevster to be a must-pick. This guy is electric, and he could realistically only get better over time. We saw the jump between 2020, where he was already pretty good, mind you, and 2021, where he really did take it to another level. There's a lot to like about Kevster. He's a number one playmaking option, even when the team he's playing for is full of all-stars, as he proved on the Gladiators last year. He can stand out from the rest of the pack and be identified as a real problem for the competition. Another great quality, though, that makes him such a great option is his flexibility. He's got what I consider to be, at least, an underrated hero pool. His tracer usually gets all the attention, which I believe is understandable when considering how amazing he is, but he's not to be underestimated on a lot of these other characters. He can be a reliable projectile and or hitscan option. His Echo, Farah, Genji, Hanzo, Mei, Widowmaker, Ash, and Cassidy are all pretty solid. Kevster can be utilized in a wide range of situations, all the while giving you somebody who can compete at a top level no matter what he's playing. And there's probably so much more that he can do that we just haven't gotten a chance to see yet. And if all of that still wasn't enough, Kevster on top of all of that is a great pick due to the fact that he's arguably the best player out of Europe currently. Some other guys from different teams emerged last year as well, but I don't think anybody showed the superstar potential or had as many hard carry moments as Kevster. He is going to be the rock and foundation of this team. As for who's going to be lining up next to him at DPS, I'm rocking with Kai as the dedicated hitscan player. If I'm being honest, his presence definitely was not felt the same way as 2020. He's a bit overshadowed by Kevster in terms of stardom, I think, but I still do believe that Kai is the best option I have at the hitscan position. I guess I could in theory have Kevster play hitscan instead, but in my opinion, that could lead to some limitations on what the DPS line is capable of, even if we do get another decent flex DPS. 
Kai opens up a lot, but also, you have to remember that there really aren't that many European players from different teams throughout the league, and Kai happens to be one of the better options available, so in my eyes, it would be foolish to not cash in on this opportunity. Kai is essentially as good as it gets for EU hitscan, and that is by no means a bad thing, by the way. In my opinion, Kai is really awesome. Based on what we've seen out of him the last couple of years, he's more than capable of carrying a team. He's got excellent consistency across all sniper characters, and his Cassidy is no joke either. He's a mechanical freak who just needs to hit a shot or two before he starts to catch fire. He's had so, so many great games throughout the years, and I think people are quick to forget since Pelican was clearly the star of the show in Atlanta last year. Overall, Kai and Kevster should bounce off each other nicely. They can focus on their strong points without really interfering with each other. Think about what they could do if, like, the meta calls for a Tracer or maybe Echo plus some sort of Sniper, let's say. I mean, even a Cassidy May rush comp could end up being nasty. The only thing I'm maybe a bit uncertain with is if the meta calls for dive. Could I expect Kai to realistically play well enough on Tracer if Kevster needed to play something else? I for one believe in Kai to figure some stuff out because he truly is that talented, but we obviously do end up taking a bit of a hit if somebody other than Kevster has to play Tracer. But you know what? You can't always have everything you want in life, especially in a challenge like this, so I'm selecting Kai as my hitscan player. He's proven to be reliable, and even though I'm biased here, I really do believe that Kai is capable of taking over a game in the same way as Kevster, if not very close. I'm confident that these two are going to lead the way as a power duo most of the time. They're going to be the core of this lineup that the rest of the team looks to enable at all times. Kevster Kai is a great start, but there needs to be some sort of other playmaking outside of DPS if this team has any hopes of being competitive. What's another important position that can make or break a team's playmaking potential? If you guessed flex support, you're thinking the same way as me. That's where we head next. And you know, there's honestly a couple of good options. Provide out of London and Skyrep out of Vancouver definitely have potential. But there is one guy who has already proven himself at this level that I would be a fool to pass up on. The flex support in this lineup shall be Khan. Paris had a few different guys who stood out last year for sure, but Khan honestly might have been the most impressive. I was looking forward to watching him in his rookie year, but he definitely exceeded my expectations by a good margin. Coming into his rookie season, I thought he'd be really good on Baptiste, but I wasn't really sure about the other things, but he really ended up being more impactful on Zen and Ana in my opinion. It's not to say that his BAP was terrible, it's more that he showed a very well-rounded hero pool. He was doing some great things on all of the typical flex support heroes. To be second in damage per 10 minutes on Zenyatta when you have some crazy competition like Jonak and Violet and all those guys, that's pretty ridiculous. And when you accompany that with the big plays he was making with Ana, as well as the reliability on BAP, the man was a well-oiled machine. He's just what you want out of this position. He can make a lot of the impactful plays, and he can do it every single game. And what I love is that he can do it in any composition you can think of. That flexibility is a very underrated aspect of his game. There's a lot of other great flex supports who are really good at some things, but clearly are a lot weaker on others. I tend to think of like Jonek on Baptiste, or or Violet with Ana, just to name a couple of examples, but Khan really doesn't have that kind of weakness, and that means he'll likely always be a contributor alongside Kai and Kevster, and that is absolutely massive, as it guarantees more than half the team should in theory be keeping up with the opposition. For the limitations we have in place, this is what I consider to be a solid group of playmakers. In my opinion, we secured great pieces at the most important positions to succeed, and that's what truly matters. Regardless of how the other two positions stack up, I feel I've given this team a chance to succeed or at least keep games close. With that in mind, how about we get a main support to give Khan a partner in crime? It kind of goes without saying that at this point, the choices are severely limited. With Glad's and Paris players already being chosen, that means no funny Astro or Dridro. That basically leaves us with either Masa or Admiral. And if it comes down to these guys, the answer should be fairly easy. Masa has to be the guy, right? No disrespect to Admiral, he really has worked his butt off to finally make the league, but he's not proven in the same way as Masa. Admiral may have won a few tournaments and contenders, but Masa is a three-year Overwatch League veteran with experience on multiple championship-level teams, and there is a big difference there. Masa played a role in helping the Atlanta Reign make 2019 and 2021 playoff pushes. He might have some inconsistencies with his game and everything, but he has more than proven himself to be an Overwatch League caliber main support. 
Aside from 2020, which was a down year for Atlanta in general, I'd like to add, Masa overall has been pretty good. His main specialty is, of course, Lucio. That's one character that he truly is capable of being top tier on. He's got a good head on his shoulders when it comes to making a difference on Lucio. He's got good decision making when it comes to beat timings, and he's way above average in terms of making the place himself on this character. His boops are some of the best you'll ever come across. The main concern, though, probably comes from Brigitte. It showed improvement during Season 4 with him, but it could obviously be a lot better, seeing as he's still very aggressive on that hero, and it oftentimes did lead to him paying with his life. So any sort of Brigitte meta may be a problem, depending on the opponent. But that's okay. With the minimal number of options we're working with, Masa is actually a high value pick at this point in the selection process. Main support is not as big of a priority as DPS and flex support are anyway. Solid main supports are definitely rare to come by, but they tend to just not be as impactful as some of these other positions. So honestly, I'm fine with taking a small hit here in terms of potential hero pools. Masa is no superstar, but he's still very serviceable. Plus, I believe that he definitely has other things that help make up for things that he might be lackluster with. The big thing is his leadership. I see Masa being the guy that everybody looks up to. He's quite vocal from all accounts I've heard over the years. He knows how to direct a team and is great with ult tracking. That'll be an underrated aspect of what he contributes on this roster for sure. Masa has demonstrated his capability capabilities as a leader and individual player throughout the years. He has the experience and the knowledge to help this team go far. I trust in him to be more of a help than hindrance, even if he's not necessarily the best possible main support we could have. With the DPS and support lines now established, that leads us over to Tank. When initially making this video, I really thought hard about what I want to do here, because there's only a few EU tank players in the league, and most of them don't quite bring the impact that I'm looking for. Somebody like Don or Vestola, for example, was pretty tempting. But was it really worth picking one of them over Khan? Because if I don't pick Khan, that's going to cause a lot of other complications and changes with this lineup. And said complications did not seem worth it when looking at the team that I've constructed so far. Having a DPS line and flex support that I'm this happy with was a bigger priority. And to me, it kind of feels like even less of an emphasis is being placed on tank now anyway, now that there's only one in the game at any given time. Having a trustworthy tank player is good, of course, but I don't see it being a top priority when knowing that the trade-off simply isn't worth it when the DPS and support lines have such high potential. So with that in mind, my tank player is going to be Poco. He could also be substituted with Hottie, depending on which kind of tank gets played more, I suppose, because I really have no knowledge on if off tanks or main tanks will be played more yet, so I'm just going to play it safe and pick the guy that I simply trust more. Much like Masa, Poco is a multi-year veteran at this point with experience playing for tier 1 championship level rosters. Throughout the years, Poco has never been a terrible option. We never got to see him play in 2021, but if the other seasons tell us anything at all, then he should still be a decent player. Even in Season 3, when Fury eventually took over, he still made some nice contributions during the early parts of the year. Maybe it's just me, but he honestly looked as good as ever. Poco brings good energy and a decent overall hero pool. I'm a pretty big fan of his D.Va and Zarya. He's got the resume on both of those characters for sure, and he's very clutch. The real concerns, though, probably come through main tank heroes that he'd have to play. I'm confident in his Orisa, which I've seen him play before, but I have no clue what to expect on Ryan, Winston, or Wrecking Ball. Not to mention that I honestly still do have some questions about what he could do on Sigma. Poco has a lot to prove despite my confidence in him, but again, there's not much of a choice in the matter. If I go with Hottie, then the same questions are going to be present, but for the off-tank heroes instead. Hottie might actually have the better hero pool if I'm going to be honest with you, but I generally have more confidence in Poco as a player. Tank is a predicament for sure. The best tank to probably have, I guess, would be Don, as he's shown off some good flexibility that goes beyond the typical main tank heroes, but I just don't see a world where it's worth sacrificing Khan for some tank flexibility. Am I crazy for going this route? The rest of the team just feels so good on paper. The only thing I could really think of is to put Don at main tank, then provide at flex support, since we have to have a London player on here. There's really no other choice. If that's the only position that I'm not feeling so great about, when the alternatives are so minimal, then I will gladly take it. The rest of the team looks so good, so whether it be Poco or Hottie, I think that this roster can sufficiently cover some of their potential weaknesses. I have concerns about tank, but I'm willing to take the risk. So to recap, my Overwatch League European Dream Team consists of Kevster, Kai, Masa, 
Khan, then either Poco or Hadi, depending on what tank is more important. I'm defaulting to Poco since I find him more trustworthy, but it truly does depend on the meta, and we don't know anything about it, at least from like a non-insider perspective. Overall, I'm content with this roster. I originally thought that I'd be stuck with something that I really didn't like, so this was a pleasant surprise. We've got good playmakers at most positions, clear strong points with our superstar level DPS, and lots of veteran experience. I'm not expecting this lineup to be a world beater, but on paper, they're not bad at all. I can leave behind this video feeling satisfied with what I've come up with, but maybe those of you watching feel differently, and if that's the case, I encourage you to let me know what your European dream team would look like in the comment section using the same rules. And if you enjoyed this content and want more in the future, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And as always, thank you all so much for watching my video, I appreciate your support so much, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.